So we've just talked about standard deviation and how it explains the spread of the numbers. And I just want to look at two places where we use the spread of the numbers. The first one is what we discussed as the usual values. So things that are typical or not too extreme. So, you know, you might see one person who's, you know, six feet five, and that's pretty tall. But most people, you know, are generally, you know, not much more than 6'2 or 6'3. And so the way that we calculate that formula to find what's our kind of middle ground heights or whatever it may be that we're studying, to find that usual minimum or that usual maximum, what we do is we take the average, which we've already studied, and then we either add or subtract two standard deviations. So what this next piece says is two times the standard deviation for whatever it is we're studying. That X in the middle is old-fashioned time symbol. So the standard deviation helps us figure out when somebody would be too tall or too small compared to a usual group of, you know, heighted people. The problem is sometimes with standard deviation, we don't have it. Average is pretty easy. You add them all up, divide by how many there are. But for standard deviation, if you don't have a calculator that does it for you, it requires a little bit more work. But we're pretty lucky because what we can do is approximate standard deviation. So we have this thing called the range rule of thumb. So rule of thumb meaning it's not exact, but it kind of you know gives us an approximation. So what we do is take the range, and don't forget that the range, whoops, sorry, is you know the highest value minus the smallest value, and we divide by four. And four is the standard number to use because it kind of considers that there's about four chunks of information. And this won't really come up till later in the semester, but since we're learning standard deviation now, it's a good time to learn it now. So let's go ahead and look at this first problem. If I had to calculate or approximate, should I say, the standard deviation, I would use the range rule of thumb, and I would start off by finding the range. So 8 minus 2, the largest value minus the smallest value. I'm always going to divide by 4 because that's what the formula says. And in this place, I get 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and answer 1.5. Let me have you find the approximate standard deviation using the range rule of thumb for problem 3b. And take a close look at the numbers before you work on this. So go ahead and hit pause, work on it, and then hit play. Okay, did you get 4 for your answer? If you didn't, it's probably because you were off a little bit in the range. Remember, we need to find the small and the high, and they aren't necessarily in order in this particular list. So once I took the 52 and subtracted the 36, dividing by 4, because the formula said to divide by 4, I just happened to get 4 for the answer. And the second measure of standard deviation that's going to come up a lot in the future is something that's called the empirical rule. And it's something that we'll use from chapter 6 on a whole bunch. But the key here is that you need to have a bell-shaped distribution. And we talked about distributions and shapes back in chapter 2. So what happens is that once you know the shape of your data, then you're going to find out that 68% of all data, if it's within that bell shape, is going to be within one standard deviation of the mean. So for example, let's take the height of a woman. And let's say that the average height of a woman is 5'2 with a standard deviation of 2 inches. Then I could come down here and write that the mean height of a woman is 5 feet 2 inches. I could add one standard deviation of 2 inches, which would bring me up to 5'4, and subtract 2 inches from the mean, which would bring me down to 5 feet. So what I'm saying is that 68% of women are within one standard deviation above and below the average. So 68% of an average height group of women are between 5 feet and 5'4". Five and then this process can continue for each of these items. So if we were to go from the mean up by two standard deviations, 
we're going to hit 95% of our data. So looking down below, if I add another 2 inches to height, I'm going up to 5, 6, and down to 5, sorry, 4, 10 if I subtract. So now what I've done is I've said that 95% of data, 95% in this case of heights, because that's what I happen to be talking about, are within two standard deviations. So in any group of average height women, 95% of the people in that room will be between 5, sorry, 410 and 56. And then the last one we usually ever study is going up to three standard deviations. We don't get 100% of the population. We only get 99.7%, but by adding another 2 inches and subtracting another 2 inches, we're getting almost 100% of the heights of women in an average room. Now notice, I don't know how well you can see it, there's these little baby corners off to the side that we don't have. That's our, you know, 0.3% of the population. So, you know, we might have an average height room of women, but yeah, there's gonna be one woman who's taller than 5'8", or one woman who's smaller than 4'8". But in general, 99.7% of the women in that room should be within three standard deviations.